Hello and welcome to round 10 of Grand Prix San Diego. I'm Ben Swartz, joined here in the booth by Marshall Sutcliffe, and we've got Brian Kibler on the right-hand side of your screen, Sorry, facing off against James Ladawak on the left-hand side of your screen. Okay. Looks like James gonna start, is going to start things off with a Arid Mesa. Yeah, now we know that Kibler's on Naya. Yeah. He, uh, he loves... Naya with Domni Ray, Rade. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And, uh, and he, he, he loves uh, that color combination in particular, and it, it's Domni Ray, yeah, <laughs> and he... Um, he gets to play a lot of his favorite <laughs> cards, Noble Hierarch, Knight of the Reliquary. These are cards that uh, have become kind of his signature cards in this uh, second phase of his career as a professional Magic player. And uh, he's got to be pretty happy uh, to be uh, undefeated yeah. in day one with, with hi really his favorite stuff. I mean, he's just got to be. And also, this happens to be his hometown as well. So he's got to be like the happiest guy. Yeah, it looks like James Lilac on some <coughs> Deceiver Exarch type deck. He's got Kiki Jiki and a Murderous Red Cap, so maybe Maliripod with a secondary combo. Maybe he's just playing the, the Murderous Red Cap for fun. Yeah, so that is <coughs> interesting. We, we saw that yesterday. So there's a Murderous Red Cap that goes in the Maliripod combo to right. enable infinite damage. There's also a random Murderous Red Cap in the Kiki Jiki decks yeah, that yeah. I think is just for value. Okay. Like just to kill something. I could. I looked at the list twice, and I could not figure out how they could infinite with it. So maybe yeah, it's just I mean for it's it's pod? a persist card that costs four, and sure. they might just need those because you know you do get to to pod those twice, and it is value. I mean, you get to kill a creature usually. Pretty good start for James here. Apparently, a uh, a lands in front as they're in the red zone here. <laughs> well, I mean, Kibler hasn't had. He has a good start also. He turned one Noble Hierarch, and now yes. he's probably going to cast Knight of the Reliquary and yeah. then Kibler on Absolutely. turn two. And it's going to be a 4-4. Four, four. So. Oh. Anyway. Uh, yeah, so uh, a Knight of the Reliquary yeah. Yeah, you for Kibler. You can do that with, uh, sure. Um, it is an Eye of the Reliquary, yeah. So it's already yeah, a 4-4, four yeah. four, like you said, Ben. <coughs> Just huge. It's going to be able to apply a lot of pressure, uh, especially now that that Wall of Roots is down. <laughs> and there's the Murderous Red Cap that we were talking about. It's going to take out Noble Hierarch, although Hierarch's already done a pretty decent amount of work here. Well, I mean, it cast one spell. Yeah, could, but could it cast more. it a turn early. Right, right. No, I mean, yeah. It's not the world's greatest noble hierarch. It fell to an early death, but truth. Arid Mesa for Kibler is going to potentially make Knight of the Reliquary bigger as we see him kind of pump fake an attack here. Yeah. Nope, it is going to get in there. And Murder's Red Cap's going to block. Ping Kibler for one, dropping him down to 15. Then Kibler's going to take one more by cracking his Aaron Mesa. Is this is an important follow-up play here. Yeah. Another Knight of the Reliquary, maybe? That would be awesome. Probably ideal. He could also play a Loxon and Smiter, which would be fine. I mean, I can't imagine this is a very good matchup game one for, for Kibler. I think game two, he's probably got a bunch of... Games two and three, he's probably got a bunch of great stuff in his sideboard. Yeah. Um, yeah, that makes sense. <coughs> but just generally, like, he's a slower aggro deck. Yes. And we There's saw... There's a smiter. Yeah. Okay. I mean, he does have nine power on the board right now. Yeah. And it's actually just turn three. So it's pretty pretty potent, but it is not as fast as some of the decks in the format for sure. Yeah, but I mean, like, James is... Well, like if he, he had, if he had some more turn. lands, he'd be pretty close to... I mean, yeah, I guess so. He doesn't have... You know, he's got to spend at least one turn playing the, the birthing pod. He's, I see that he's got a court of calling, so yeah. he's going to be doing that this turn. Uh, he can court for one, two, three, so for just three. He wants to court for one more so he can go get Restoration Angel and then try to untap and cast Kiki Jiki. Mm -hmm. um, but he doesn't currently have the mana. If he had another land, that would be perfect. So Rashad was saying that um, with with Murderous Red Cap, just because it's a, a persister on four, you can pot it into Conscripts, untap the Birthing Pod, <coughs> Repod, the murderous red cap to get Kiki Jiki, and then you're you're infinite. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's a great thing to yeah. have, right? And it's also just kills a creature sometimes that you need to. 
Right, but it's not instrumental to the combo besides just being a four mana persist creature. That's right. Like, you could do the same thing with uh, Glenelander Archmage, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. But, I mean, he's not running... James here doesn't look like he's running blue. No. So, so we're back to Kibler's turn. He's going to smash in with that Smiter. Looks like he has other plans for the uh, Knight of the Reliquary, though. Yeah, I mean, James kind of has to take it here. He's still on the plan of drawing another land and a turn quarter calling for Restoration Angel. I mean, he could actually, if he's got a Deceiver Exarch in his deck or a Pastor Might, he could end of turn quarter calling for Pastor Might or Deceiver Exarch and then hope to draw another land to cast um, Kiki Jiki. But, uh, so he's going to take the four. Kibler doesn't have a play. James is going to end of turn cast Court of Calling. And you think he's going to get a Restoration Angel here? Uh, no, it's, it's only for three, so oh, he's going to see Rexar. Okay, yep. <coughs> and then hope to draw another land to cast Kiki Jiki on the following turn. All right. Sacrifice. Yeah, it looks like Kibler's going to activate his uh, Knight of the Reliquary here. Sack of Forest. Let's see what he gets. And Aaron Mesa, so he's just for value. Just making his uh, Knight of the Reliquary big, thinning out his deck a little bit. He might have also tapped it for mana first. Well, I mean, he, he wants to use it because the Deceiver X is tapping down the Nether Oil Query. Oh, yeah. What, on the last turn? So, yeah, if, if he there's... He did that on end step? Yeah. He quarter calling in end step. Yeah, so... Yeah. I mean, uh, not like Knight's doing much anyway, right? James just needs to draw any land, and he drew Misty Rainforest. Yep. So, he can play that fifth land, cast Kiki Jiki, and create infinite Deceiver X -Arcs. So, it looks like James... Now, what if Kibler has, like, Path here? I mean, that's troublesome, yeah. Yeah. But what you're facing down, you don't really have time to yeah. to wait. I mean, James probably has one more turn, and that's it, right? That that Night of the Reliquary is a 6-6, six, 7-7 six, seven, seven likely. Before after. he has to start throwing guys in front, at least. Right. And <laughs> Steam vents. That makes red mana. He doesn't even need it to make red mana, because he's got three thanks to the birds. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, kiki-jiki. And even if Brian has a path, it's not the wor end of the world, because... James has uh, eternal witness to go get that quarter calling again. But pretty much if Kibler doesn't have a removal spell here. Kibler's over. finishing shuffling his deck, so. He's probably got something. Oh. <laughs> All right, so there's a path. And he's going to use it on Kiki Jiki. Right. <coughs> Okay, so... So Kibler thwarts that initial attempt to go infinite. So there's one copy of Deceiver Exarch in play, whose triggered ability, his Enter the Battlefield ability, has already been activated. That's right. Targeting the Kiki Jiki, so... He'll get to attack for one here. He can untap his birds... No, 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 it's already been chosen. He chose the Kiki Jiki as the target. But the Deceiver Arc XR gets to tap or untap a permanent. Right, right. He chose the Kiki Jiki as the target. And in response to that, Kibber used Path to Exile. James activated Kiki Jiki, copying his Deceiver XR. That came into play. Uh huh. And its trigger went on the stack and targeted Kiki Jiki. Oh, I see Jiki. what you're saying. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. okay, good. So now, James is so going to have to So they block. should have a token or something there then, right? Right. I thought he did it in response to targeting the Deceiver x because why would Kibler let him have a token? So he would waste his abilities so he couldn't cast something else this turn? Oh, I, I see. Know. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, we just have to assume that there's another one there and that it went away, I guess. I don't really know. Um, They're not being super... It, it's not really that relevant. Anyway. Yeah, I mean, J James here has to chump block with his Murder's Red Cap. Yeah. And then hope to be able to do something on the following turn, which is possible. Depends how many like, Kiki Jikis are in his deck. Okay, so Rashad's telling us he's got a second Kiki Jiki in his deck. So chump with the red cap on Knight of the Reliquary. Take four, go to six. And then he can cast Eternal Witness and um, Kitchen Finks on the following turn. I, I guess he's one green mana short. Oh, no, he isn't. He's got the mana. He drew Restoration Angel. Hmm. And his hand is two Finks Witness Restoration Angel now. Yeah. So he could conceivably just cast Eternal Witness 
getting back Court of Calling, right? That will leave him with three mana, and then um, on the following turn, he could cord for one, two, three. He's a little ways away. For four. He can stay alive. He can stay alive, but he can't hard. immediately combo right now. Yeah, he can, he can, uh, yeah, that's a good point, Rashad. He can just play Kitchen Finks and then Restoration Angel Kitchen Finks the next turn, and he can gain four life and prevent, like, 12 or 14 yeah, or yeah. something, so. That's probably what he's thinking about right now. Does he want to try to set himself up for another combo and be dead to... Um, like, a burn spell? <coughs> or does he want to protect himself with things? So he's going to use his wall of roots here, tap two lands, and cast Eternal Witness, it looks like. Whoa. Back up. Alt to you. All right, looks like she's going to main phase a Restoration Angel here. And is he going to... What is he going to he, he can reset his Wall of Roots, or he can blink a Deceiver Exarch to untap a land. Well, if he wanted to reset his Wall of Roots, he would have used it, right? Yeah, you just do it with it on the stack, too. So, it But he didn't. He blinked a land, and then he's going to play an Eternal Witness and bring Wall of Roots down to uh, an 0-1. Eternal Witness should get back Cord. Or yeah, yeah, there cord. it is, Cord. And I'll give him the opportunity to win on the following turn, so. Yeah, he's got plenty of blockers <coughs> now. I mean, not actually. I don't know why he's attacking there, but too, too many. Because if he wants to be able to cast Cord for Kiki Jiki, oh, yeah, he yeah. needs his wall of, root in, wall of Roots in play. Does he? He's got he doesn't need four, it. five, six, seven, eight. But he's going to have to jump with Eternal Witness. Yeah. Either Eternal Witness or Also, he's Wolf in a really is. dangerous spot, because remember, we know that Kibler also has a Kessig Wolf run that he can search up with Knight of the Reliquary and just dump a ton of mana. If he, try to put oh, yeah. if he tries to put his Eternal Witness in front instead of like a Deceiver Exarch, which he, he needs, he could, he could block with the Restoration Angel, though. The question is, does James know that Kibler has access to Kessig Wolf run? Probably not. Probably not. It's not... Something that you would always consider here. So how much could Kibler activate Wolfrun for? Uh, so he can sack the Arid Mesa, get a land, tap it, sack that to get it. So he's got one mana floating, and then he has two, three, tap that, so he could do it for four. three more. Yeah. For right? four, right? Well, this... the Oh, yeah, the Arid Mesa becomes the, uh, the Kessig Wolfrun. Yes. All right, so he is, in fact, going to put the Restoration Angel in front. And, and Kibler is going to go get Kessig Wolf Run. So is that enough? He'll make his guy an 8-4 and trample over for f 4 or for 5. Yeah, there's, there's an Exalted Trigger as well. There's the Kessig Wolf Run. Now, Kibler has not cracked that Arid Mason. It doesn't look like he's going to. Well, this will put so he wants James to, to 1. Well, he, he's not tapping out, though. Okay, so he's doing it for three two. For two? Yeah, because he tapped that green first before this happened. Oh, there's three. Four. Five. Um. Okay, three, it looks like. Four. He's wolf running for three, and he's got Path to Exile for the Restoration Angel, oh and yeah. all the trample damage is going to carry over, and that means that Brian Kibler is going to win game one here. We've seen that, though, this weekend. Is, you know, Kibler, <coughs> he, he will win games like that that it doesn't seem like he hasn't won yet because people don't know quite what he has in his deck. So there you get a look at the feature match area. On the back table, you see Harry Corvese versus David Sharfman. And there's Shahar Shenhar. I don't know whose opponent it is, but 
Shar coming off a Grand Prix top eight last weekend in Verona. Like he does. It, it made up for his terrible weekend in Japan. He kind of last minute decided to book a ticket for Grand Prix Yokohama. Mm-hmm. And of course, it turned out to be 2,300 people. <laughs> yeah. And he went uh, X and 1 on the very, very long day one. Mm-hmm. And then just immediately, like, Hated his seal deck anyway. He had to play mm-hmm. a bunch more sealed rounds mm-hmm. and just, like, lost a bunch and uh. was really, really unhappy that he had spent a lot of money on the ticket to try to get, you know, a couple more pro points. And and had the kind of the big teaser. All right, let's take a look at our other match here. Dan Ward on the right versus Nathan Calvin. Looks like Rug. <laughs> yeah? Rug against Junk. Is that Threads? Yes. Threads of Disloyalty here is going to take Noble Hierarch. Nathan's threads is going to take Dan's Noble Hierarch and then I don't know if that was the greatest thing to do but okay he didn't have any other target for it he must have just wanted to play something here he's also at 9 and he's facing down 2 locks and smiters and a kitchen finks Hmm. Looks like Goyf's a 3-4 right now. It's Dan's turn. He's just drawing his card. He's deciding how he wants to approach attacks here. He's got four untapped mana and at least a couple of cards in hand, so he's probably got some options to consider here as far as uh, pre-combat play. Well, he's going to crack in with all of his guys. Yeah, ship the team. I guess with Nathan at nine, it makes sense to just take uh, Trump Walker with threads. Yeah. So Nathan's going to take three huh, from the kitchen. So I fix. guess the Goyf is a four or five. There must be a couple cards off the off the radar there. Yeah, it's going to drop Nathan down to... Uh, I mean, it's sorcery sixer. instant land creature, so... But there, I didn't see a creature before. Um, oh, unless that's his... Is there... So I assumed that those sideways cards were... Exile? Yeah, but they must not be. As Although I don't know what that Marsh Flats is doing. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Anyway. I mean, I think that this is a, a creature, too, at the bottom of Nathan's yeah, graveyard. I, did, I, thought it, I didn't think it was, but anyway, it must be. Anyway, Obstinate yep. Baloth. All right, that's going to help out. Yep. Obstinate Baloth. And now uh, Nathan seems to be have stabilized defensively though he's one removal spell away from being much less stable. In fact, just being dead. He's also like one scape shift away from winning, right? I, I don't think he's playing scape shift. Is he? Oh, you're right. He is. He's playing value cut. <laughs> I mean, he's got Tarmogoyps in there. And there's a path to exile, and that could do it. Um, so he's at 10. He can block the smiter, take 6, go to 4. Uh-huh. I think he's alive for one more turn. Yeah, you're right. He is, li- he is alive for one more because turn. Because of the obstinate payoff gaining in life. And there's another mountain, on, although that's still not close to enough to get Valakid <laughs> going. Well, he's got five, so the next mountain deals three damage. Oh, you're right. He does have five. He's Thanks, two steam man. vents, I stomping see, grounds, I didn't and two see that. Mounts. You are correct, sir. So, yeah, he's actually pretty close. Dan Ward has shipped everybody. Block a kitchen, Finks. Take seven, go to three. Finks comes back. It's going to put Dan up to 20. And this is a big draw step here for Nathan Calvin. He draws Cryptic Command. It's a sweet draw. Yeah. Can never be unhappy with a Cryptic Command. No, he's already got two other lands in hand. So he really needed that. One of them's Misty Rainforest, so he can get a mountain if he really wants to. Finish off that kitchen, Finks. Yeah, I don't know if he wants to do that, but it's definitely an option, right? Yeah. I don't know how many. We don't have his deck list in front of us. No. I don't know how many mountains are in his deck to see whether or not he could recombo or combo here with. with yeah, Skyfair. and that's it. Oh. Um. 
I guess we do have his deck list. Sweet. The, the judge snuck up on us. They were sitting right in front of you. Well, you know, look, it's tough. I can't. I know, you're watching the match. You should be. I'm focused. Looks like he only has 10 mountains in his deck. Four steam vents, four stomping grounds, and two basics. So he would not then be able to recombo. No. But dying is also not awesome, so <laughs> he might just yeah. take the hit here. Well, uh, he could have cast Cryptic Command, tap down all the creatures, and draw a card, but instead he's going to get a steam vents, use Valkyrie, just like you said, to finish off the Kitchen Finks, probably trade with... So he's going to have to use Cryptic here to bounce something then? Yeah. Hmm. He's going to return smiter. smiter and draw a card and then block Finks? Okay. Uh, there's a search for tomorrow, which isn't going to do much in this position. Well, oh, yeah. He doesn't have any more basic mountains left in his deck. Right. So the thing, if he did, he could then finish he off could that Then he could use things. it as a, as a, sh as a light, lightning bolt. But. All right. <coughs> so Dan Ward has seen his board dwindle down to just a 2-1 uh, kitchen, kitchen Finks, but he still has cards in hand here. Nathan Calvin at a very precarious life total. Yeah. And uh, we know that Dan has at least a Loxident Smiter in his hand. We can't get a look at the rest. That was probably better than tapping down creatures and drawing. Because you get him to spend three mana to recast that Loxident Smiter and you get to pick off half of the Kitchen Finks. Sure. So. Yeah. Dan sitting on a nice... 21. Yeah. <laughs> he, he's had a pretty cushy life total here. He's not. But. It was it two. So. Scape shift. Oh, it's two. Scape shift here, if Nathan draws one, he could sack his island forest. I guess those are the only two cards, right? And get. A Valkut and some mountains. He could also sack some of his existing mountains. Yeah, he could sack some of his existing mountains. So he's, he has ten mountains total in his deck, and he's got six in play right now. So he could sack four to get a Valkut and three lands, and that's eighteen damage. And Dan's at nineteen, according yeah. to our. He was at twenty-one, but I mean Nathan doesn't have Scape Shift in his hand. Right. Yeah, that, but that is that is definitely something that Nathan's going to be looking to do. That's a big part of his plan. I don't know what Dan's thinking about so long. No. Yeah, let's go to our feature match because he's. D it took. It took. No, it's okay, Rashad. Thanks for asking, but <laughs> <laughs> you're so I just kind to Rashad. I, it's just <laughs> that was a long time, and I'm curious to see how uh, how Kibler's going to sideboard against uh, James. So James begins with a noble hierarch. It looks as if he mulligan to six cards here. Treetop Village for Brian Kibler is going to lead things off. Looks like a turn to uh, Birthing Pod is in the works here for James. Yep, take two, Birthing Pod. Not sure that he should have just jammed that out there. I may have just cast the Wall of Roots. It could be that Kibler has Ancient Grudge in his deck. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I mean, uh, against decks with counter spells, you always just want to get that <laughs> earliest possible Birthing Pod. But yeah, against uh, decks without them, it's going to resolve. Like yeah. He's either going to have an answer or he's not. Oh, okay. Lotus Cobra. One of two Lotus Cobras for Brian Kibler. He doesn't want to overload on those, but they can do some pretty broken things. Especially with Knight of the Reliquary. So here... It's a lot of landfall. Can James... Uh, so James he's has... He's, I think, one mana short of going off... Because he can cast a two, go get Deceiver Exarch to bounce his, uh, to untap his birthing pod, and then go get Phantasmal Image if he has it, which he has one, to go copy Deceiver Exarch and then do a bunch of stuff. But I think he's like quite a few minutes short. Anyway, he's gonna cast Spell Skite, Spell Skite, and sack it to birthing pod. Yeah. And he does have a Glendalindra Archimage in his deck, so oh, yeah. he does. Very similar to Murder's Red Cap. So he gets a three drop here. He just went right by a Deceiver Ooh, Exarch. Oh, wow. Flectomancer. Static, static caster. caster. Yeah, yeah, man. 
is a static caster. <laughs> so he's going. He's not recently seen in standard decks. Yeah, he's not trying to uh, combo off here. He just says, "Look, I'm just going to take down any of your small creatures here." And starting with that Lotus Cobra. Kibla plays a Horizon Canopy. On the following turn, in two turns he can combo, right? He can sacrifice his Static Caster to go get Glenelandra Archmage, and uh -huh. then sacrifice Glenelandra Archmage, as we were saying last game, to, to get, get Zealous, Zealous Conscripts, and then... Untap the pod, and then sacrifice the Glenelandra Archmage again to get Kiki Jiki, yeah. and then he's infinite. <coughs> and here you, you get to see the true, the raw power of Birthing Pod. I mean, yeah. James's hand was not great. It no. had a bunch of... Yeah. But it had a birthing pot and some creatures, and all. Well, actually, of a sudden drew the birthing pot in turn two. But okay, yeah. <laughs> Still, birthing pot really, really doing some work here. And Kibler, surprisingly, having somewhat of a slow start. Turn three is where he starts playing smiters or yeah, neither reliquaries, and just just passed it back on, on turn three. Okay, so Wall of Roots gets sacked to go get Deceiver Exarch. Deceiver Exarch is going to untap Birthing Pod. Okay. Then James is going to sacrifice his Static Caster. Ooh, Avon Mind Sensor is flashed in. Wow. So Avon Mind Sensor says if you would search through your library, you can only look at the top four cards instead. That's killer. And that's pretty sweet, too. Uh, you know, so Kibler did let him do it once here, right? Well, he wanted him to sacrifice the Static Caster so that the Static Caster couldn't kill the Mind Sensor. Right. Mind sensor is a 2 1 flyer. Yep. So. <laughs> Pretty awesome. Yeah. Okay, good luck. Hopefully, you find what you need in the top four cards. I'm saying, hopefully, I'm sure Kibler's saying, hopefully, you find what you need in the top four cards. No, no, he's just, uh, they're just making sure that his life total is correct. All right, there it is. And nothing. He needs bricks. That is awesome. <laughs> Even Mind Sensor is awesome. I <laughs> never got to play that card when it was legal. and uh <laughs> It wasn't actually good when it... Oh, is that, that right? That, that great. It was, it's been much better in these older formats. It was really, really uh, good okay. in, in Vintage for the decks that wanted to play white. I see. Which were the minority, but... It's seen some play in Legacy in here. We're seeing play in, in Modern. <laughs> but in Standard, when it came out, there were no, like, fetch lands or... I don't know why that card just brings a certain joy. <laughs> it's just... You just would like your opponent not playing? Yeah. I think I do. <laughs> it says quite a bit about your character. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it also beats down for two in the air. It's <laughs> sweet. James falls to seven here. Yeah, James is under a lot of pressure here. And Kibler pump fakes Knight of the Royal Quarry. Well, he's sacked a fetch, so he's got to do that first. Now, the even mind sensor only affects your opponents, which is another reason why it's awesome. Yeah. And uh, Kibler announced Knight of the Reliquary, but then kind of pulled it back. I'm not really sure. He's going to have to take another damage, I guess, from that Horizon Canopy. Horizon Canopy, but he's at 18 and really under no uh, immediate pressure here. Yeah, so I'm actually 20. Snapcaster balance, okay. Snapcaster draw, then Snapcaster electrolyte. Kitchen Fink's drawn for James, but that Mind Sensor. So Kibler didn't cast the Knight of the Reliquary, he just passed on with three up. Holding back like a path to exile. That was kind of weird. Yeah, interesting. Okay, Kitchen Fink's gain two, good to nine. He's cracking that. He's Arid cracking Mesa. that Arid Mesa. Does he know? No, no, whoa, no, whoa, 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 whoa! You get to look at four. Yeah. Remember? <laughs> oh man. One, two. Oh, he found well, a mountain. He did. Three, four. So he gets that mountain. That's lucky. All right. I think the judge might be saying something right now, too. Yeah, so th so they're doing the life totals. And Kibler said he was at 20, but he took one from the Horizon Canopy. When he cast Aven Mind Sensor. And he took one from that Verdant Catacombs. But he's been gaining life off of Grove the Burn Walls. Yep, that's right. 
Wow. All right. So the, the judge, they, they were just making sure that they had life totals correct. James still shuffles his deck after. Uh, he hit that mountain. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you had to be pretty relieved to see that. Although even then, the, the mind sensor can still do work in this situation. And and James had forgotten. Uh, you know, yeah. he, he picked up his deck. Even mind sensor is a weird card. Not the kind of card that people are used to playing against. That's for sure. But he uh, but he got there. All right, birthing pod. <laughs> He's looking for a four draw, and he has four <laughs> shots to hit it. There's 0 for 1, 0 for 2, 0 for 3, and he uh, breaks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you know, spinning the roulette wheel, <laughs> sacrificing your creature and hoping that there's something in the top four. Oh, man. <laughs> Kibler asked him if he said go. James said no. Okay. And now you can go. All right, so Kibler only has one white source of mana, so if he wants to cast a creature and leave Path to Exile up, he's, he's got to make a decision there. Looks like a second white source has joined the team here, though, so he can actually play out of the Reliquary if he wants to. Yeah, I suppose Kibler is afraid of James having a drawing a Kiki Jiki because he has the mana at his disposal ah. to cast it and then go infinite with Deceiver Arc, but... We know that James put one of his Kiki Cheekies on the bottom of his library with one of the Mind Sensor things. He just drew a Giselle's Conscripts here. So Does he that could do anything? Um, if he had, yeah, so he can cast Zealous Conscripts uh, and, then, and then play his Grove of the Burn Wills and sacrifice, take, taking the Aven Mind Sensor, then uh -huh. sacrifice one of, one of his creatures. Uh, can he just sacrifice the Mind Sensor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but... I, I was trying to think of a way that he could actually win. He needs one more land to actually win. He needs seven mana, because he can play the Zealous Conscripts, take the Aven Mind Sensor, sacrifice his, the Aven Mind Sensor to go get Restoration Angel. Restoration Angel blinks Deceiver Exarch to untap Birthing Pot, and then he can sacrifice the Restoration Angel to go get Kiki Jiki and win, but that's, he's one mana short of doing that. Right, and so instead he's going to sacrifice Kitchen Finks and try to find a four drop in the, next, in the top four. I don't understand doing this. This, to me, makes no sense. How come? I, if, if I were him, I would just get the Mind Sensor off the board and get ready to combo on the following turn. Okay. While holding back some some Trump Walkers. Here he just threw away one of his Trump Walkers that he, he needs against the Because he does have player. a land in hand, right? Yeah, he's got a Grove of the Burn Willow. So he's got enough mana. He'd take two damage, but he's got enough mana to play Conscripts and pot it away, right? Yeah. I'm trying to think now about um, Kessig Wolf Run Math. Sure. So yeah, that Knight of the Road Kib is definitely threatening that. Kibler right can Kibler can cast a Wolf Run for uh, four. It looks like five if he's got another land in hand, and that might be close to enough. A it actually didn't end up mattering. Uh, we we know that Kibler had the Path to Exile. So even if James had a, another land, a seventh land or a seventh mana source he wouldn't have actually been able to win on the spot, but... Yeah, well, no, no, but we're, we're talking about from James' perspective here. Right, right. right. Yeah. So, he's got a refreshing drink to uh, ease his woes here as he's facing down potentially lethal damage from Brian Kibler and a really <laughs> annoying Aven Mind Sensor. And Thundermaw Hellkite. Wow, okay. Boom. <laughs> That's a big creature. <laughs> well, let's crack into the red zone. I mean, James gets to survive here. Barely, right? You can chump block the Nether Rock and go to yeah. one. Mm -hmm. But Brian also knows that making James chump his creatures off gives him that much less flexibility when it comes to birthing pod stuff. I mean, also, he's d just immediately dead in the next turn because of d uh, Death Ray Shaman. That's right. If there's an instant or sorcery in the yard, which I think there is. Maybe not. Actually, I don't think there is an instant or sorcery in, in either graveyard. And that's a land off the top for James. And he still has Zealous Conscripts but with Kibler at 16. It seems hard to yeah. figure out a situation where I, I don't think James has any six drops in his deck that, you know, can be some huge equalizer or something. So things are looking pretty good for Kibler. I don't see any in his list. Yeah, the other ones that we've seen this weekend haven't had it. I don't looked at his, but... Hmm. Yeah, so James thinking through 
his options, seeing if there's anything that can let him stay alive. He's reading Thundermont Hellkite. <laughs> Gonna get a quick review on all the <laughs> the stat line on that guy. <laughs> <laughs> five five flyer yeah. and a small little enter the battlefield ability. Yeah. Oh, and haste. Why not? Oh yeah. Throw that on there too. All right. So James is just making sure that there's nothing that he's overlooking. He does have a birthing pod and a zealous conscripts, and I've seen some absolutely absurd things happen from that. Uh, the, the real problem that he has is that death right shaman as well. Like no yeah. matter even if he was able, well, there's, there's no instant or sorcery in the graveyard. I don't think. Oh yeah, that's a good point. So he's not immediately dead, but here he's just throwing away his deceiver exarch. Look in the top four again. That that mind sensors really just put a you know pin. Hey, he found one though. Wow, Rest <laughs> restoration angel. Yeah. I don't think that's going to do anything. He's one for four, but it doesn't do enough. And uh, Kibler says that was a really good mind sensor that game. We yeah. agree. <laughs> Everybody at home watching probably agrees, too. And that's a, a card that if you do play a lot of modern and you have access to white mana, you might want to consider putting in your sideboard as well. So we're going to hop back to the other match, catch the end of that one. So this is game three. It looks like Nathan won that second game. And we'll get those life totals updated for you guys in just a moment. Here, Serum Visions is getting flashback because of the Snapcaster Mage. Thank you guys all for joining us this, this bright and early this Sunday morning. I guess it's not that early on the East Coast. What's the East Coast? I thought everything was just here. This is, this is our world, Ben. This is San Diego. You live yeah. in Seattle. <laughs> the West Coast, I meant. Oh. You live on the West Coast, I, yeah. I do. All right. <laughs> Wanted to confirm that with you. I, I've not moved in the last yeah. day. Early afternoon on the East Coast. Pretty early in the morning here for a Magic player, at least, on the <laughs> West Coast. But, uh, but we've got modern action here from San Diego. We're watching uh, a junk deck on the right side, piloted Is by Is Nathan Dan actually at one life? Okay, 18. One eight life. And an eight. <laughs> and uh, Nathan's playing Rug. No, he's, he's, he's playing Scapeshift. He's playing Scapeshift, but Scapeshift doesn't play Tarmogoyf, you realize. Ah, his version does. Right. And I'm saying the normal one doesn't. So I'm, I'm making a note here that he's playing a Rug deck with Scapeshift and value cards uh, like Snapcaster Mage and Tarmogoyf. Yeah, there's some older versions, and this seems to be one of them. The, the current... Uh, version of scape shift doesn't though so he's bringing it back so nathan does have a scape shift in his hand and he needs eight lands to well dan's only at 15 here okay, so, he, so he actually only needs seven lands so i think he might have it right yeah he gets up one valkut and six lands that's 18 damage Correct. Am I, am I wrong? No, okay. that is that is absolutely correct. So he just jams down that Misty Rainforest and casts. Yeah, shape, and you can even just shift. sack the Misty Rainforest. You don't have to, right. you know, to the escape shift. You don't even have to mess around with it. He just has to make sure he has enough uh, mountains in his deck, and he does. Yep. So he only has two in play. He's got ten in his deck. Yep. This is the raw power of escape shift right here. This is, uh, you know, it's interesting because the other, the the versions that we've seen this weekend um, play a much more controlling build with Cryptic Commands and some board sweepers like Fire Spout and stuff. And uh, just try to set up the, the earliest possible scape shift using Sakura Tribe Elders and Search for Tomorrow. And it looks like he's got some of those elements here, but I think that, you know, his deck also is one that can just sort of, oops, you know, 18 yeah. ya. And it uh, looks like that's what's going to happen here, although he does seem to be thinking a really long time here. Yeah, I mean... He has two green mana sources, so that's not a problem. So the, the, the problem is that that there's the scape shift, or sorry, the uh, spell skate in Dan's. Uh, You're for, right. For, for Dan's. You're so right. I just saw that spell skate there. He can only deal 12 damage, which is still good. Doesn't win on the spot, but. He can also use it. Yeah, so the way it's going to work is all the triggers are going to go on the stack at once, and then he has to decide the targets for them. Right. And uh, if he decides just to target Dan a bunch of times, then Dan can use the Spell Skite's ability, although 
Dan has maybe access to one blue mana thanks to that Deathrite Shaman. Otherwise, he's going to have to pay two life per activation, which is... It is, I mean, it's reasonable in that it's going to take all of those from lightning bolts to shocks, but like you said, if he, if he gets 12 damage through or... I guess it's going to be 10 damage, yeah, but even if still, it's 10. he... Yeah. Two green, green, do 10 to target player. He's also got a Tarmogoyf uh, as well. All right, so I think that we're going to see a blue mana made here from Dan's Deathrite Shaman. Whoop. Well, the, the problem with that is then that lets Nathan get in with his creatures. So you're trading two damage for two damage. Yeah, the Goyfs can bounce off of each other, though, right? Right, right, right. I mean, it's, it's the same thing either way. Yeah. So now Dan's just making sure that Spellskite can do what he wants. All right, he just said he's going to do all the triggers from him to the Spellskite. And he's going to pay 10 life like we, we talked about, Ben. Yep. And he says Spellskite's obviously dead. <laughs> it's like the most dead Spellskite. And so now Nathan's just going to attack with both of his creatures and deal two more damage. So Dan goes down to three. And he's, he's in bolt range now. Or just any mountain. Any mountain range. Inquisition shows Obstinate Bailoff. And Dan's just got to pass it back. He can gain some life. He can go back up to five here. Uh, Two cards in hand. We know one of them is Obstinate and Bailoff, which is also just very good here. I think the other card he drew was... No. Th you didn't s I couldn't see it. I th it looks like a Vendillion click, but that's not in his deck. No, it's, it's a Snapcaster. Snap so he yeah. just Snapcaster mages, escape shift here, and wins, right? Uh, I don't know if he's got enough mountains to do that. Do you think he's got enough mountains in his deck to re-up? He's got two more mountains. So he ha can sack three lands and get two mountains and another Valkut. And then he'll have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so yeah, that'd do it. He's got... He's probably got multiple ways he can win this game from here. Well, he'll attack first. Always a good slow roll here at Grand Prix tournaments. Yeah, <laughs> we've seen a few yesterday too. Does Deathrite jump in front of uh, Snapcaster? Remember, Dan Ward doesn't know what Nathan has in his hand outside of the uh, Obstinate Bailoff. He knows that that's coming down. Dan can also, he can chump block the Tarmogoyf and use his Goyf to eat Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, Nathan only needs one mountain in his deck. He has two, but... Yeah. So Dan's oh wait, are, still am, at am three. Am I miscounting? No, he, he just flashed back scape shift, so I don't... I think you're okay. He can't do that. He can't get another Valkit, right? He can get just two more mountains. He, he, which he's is one six. land short, right, which is... yeah. I, I miscounted for a second, You're even fine. though I sounded all confident. You're fine. So now he he just gets two triggers, which is the the same thing, right? Sacrifice faces two mountains to get two mountains. Yep. Both of those mountains will see the other five mountains that will be on the battlefield. They'll both trigger Valakut. And there's one. Dan's doing the right thing and making sure that he actually has a second mountain, yeah. and then he's just going to target you and extend the hand. So Nathan Calvin. Nathan Calvin with, uh, what did you call it, Rashad? Value cut? <laughs> Value cut. <laughs> Is going to... Ooh. He's going to keep the streak alive here as uh, one of the only undefeated players.